Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, I'm gonna talk about a few different methods to getting some really slick looking lighting in your reef cabinet. All right, so thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And this one's a little bit funny because it wasn't something I was planning on making a video on. I just went about fitting up some lighting to this Cade frag tank in the cabinet space. And I didn't really think much about it until I started going through the different options and I thought, you know what, this would make a pretty good video for everyone out there at home because I know that uh, when you get a really nice slick looking cabinet lighting, it really lifts your game and the reef keeping and being able to make maintenance a lot easier as well as just making the whole look and feel of uh, your uh, fish tank seem a lot more deluxe. So I figured I'd go through the three options that I've used on reef tanks before and why I like them. Each one of them is at a different price point, so there's something out there for the ballers and there's something out there for the DIYers. Let's jump on into it. All right, first and foremost, I highly recommend going for LEDs in your uh, cabinet lighting. They take up almost no room at all. They keep nice and cool and they put out a crazy amount of light. And also there is an option at the low end, mid range and high end of the market, depending on what you wanna do with it. So let's start off with the low end range that I've used on my previous frag tank and my previous display tank for a very, very long time. The first thing you wanna pick up is some LED strip lighting off eBay. These things come in rolls of about five, 10 meters long. You're probably only gonna need two, three, maybe five meters, depending on the size of your tank. For this tank here, I use two meters because it's 1.2 meters long. Gave me 40 centimeters on each side to basically make it hook around. That was more than enough to light up what I needed to light up. So with a couple of meters of LED strip lighting, you're gonna need a power supply. Sometimes you can pick that up off the seller that's selling the LED strip lights, but the critical component to make these work in my mind is a reed switch. This is a reed switch here. It costs $6 from JCAR. It's basically just a little magnetic switch so that uh, you attach the magnet onto your door. When you open the door, that then tells the little bit on the other side, which mounts to your cabinet, to close the circuit and turn the lights on. Then of course, when you close the door again, the magnet comes close, turns the lights off. It works just like magic. Now, the only downside is you're gonna have to run some, some wires from your power supply to the reed switch and then back to your LED strip lighting. It's not too bad if you can run that neatly and you've got a little bit of DIY experience and it keeps the option or the price very, very low. Next option I'd like to talk about is something from Ikea. Now, Ikea make these lights basically for uh, wardrobes and drawers and things like that, or even kitchens I'm led to believe, whereby they've got a little proximity sensor, sensor on the front. When you close that drawer or you close that cupboard door, it turns the LEDs off. And when you open it, it turns the lights on and it shines them back on an angle towards your um, crockery or your jocks and socks, whatever it may be. Now, the good thing is Ikea are a big company. They make a lot of these things and that therefore brings the price down. They come in a range of different sizes and lengths and they're a pretty slick looking fixture for the price. The fact that they've got the sensors built in, they come with a power supply that, well, you buy the power supply to suit the amount of um, centimeters of lights you need and they look fairly easy to mount. I've personally got these fitted in my walk-in robe and I'll go show you how they work now. Okay, wow, this is exciting. Heading into the uh, Parker's Reef walk-in robe and uh, whilst I actually have our lights in here powered off a uh, motion sensor, you can see the uh, Ikea cabinet lights here and they're a pretty slick looking little unit and uh, they do have a switch on the side here which allows you to have them just on constantly, off constantly or using their built-in sensor here. Now, you can tell I have them set to using on all the time but if I flick that over, to be automatic, now it'll actually look for a proximity close to that switch. So when the drawer or the cupboard gets close to that sensor, it turns off. And you can see I'm actually a fair way from the sensor there. It, um, we're talking a good 15, 20 centimeters away. So you don't even have to have it too close, but as soon as you uh, do get something in front of that sensor, it will turn the light off, open your cabinet door, light comes on. And like I touched on before, these come in various lengths. They put out a nice amount of light and they're a pretty slick looking fixture. I mean, nice extruded aluminum. I like the way the LEDs angle back towards your subject. It would make a very nice solution on a reef tank. All right, last and certainly not least is the uh, Philips Hue LED strip lighting. Now, 
I know these are by far the most expensive option. They have actually dropped in price quite a lot. This guy used to be about 150 bucks. This one I just picked up today cost me $107. So their price is coming down and it's two meters in length, which I touched on before. It gives me 40 centimeters, 120 and another 40. It comes with the power supply. They do also come with Bluetooth control out of the box now, but um, I already have the Philips Hue hub because most of my house is lit up by Philips Hue, which makes this option super attractive. Now, it's not just a simple matter of buying these, attaching them on. I'll show you the video of me fitting this up now. It only took me maybe about 10 minutes to fit the light up. We still need to work out a way to have these lights turn on and off when we want them. And I'll go through a few different options of doing that right now. Okay, the cheapest option is really just to turn them on at the power point. You can set them so that they have a uh, color so that uh, when you first power them on, they come on with that intensity and that color straight away. Whilst it's free, I probably wouldn't recommend it, much like I wouldn't recommend using the app on your phone because there's nothing worse than having to get out your phone, unlock it, scroll through an app, pick the device and turn it on. That's not automation at all. That's incredibly cumbersome. I wouldn't recommend it, but if you have tapped out on budget buying the lights, it is one way to make it work. All right, the next option of the Philips Hue range is their wireless dimmer switch. Now, this little thing, it's not expensive, they run at about 30 bucks, and whilst I have heaps of these throughout my house to turn lights on in different rooms, I probably wouldn't recommend it in an aquarium cabinet sense. Not that it's not up to the task, I just like things a little bit more automated than that, and um, they do come with a little magnetic housing that you can double side tape. In fact, they come with double sided tape, so you can have it just inside your cabinet door, so you can open it up and press the button it turns on. You can turn it on or off, change the color, change the dim or the brightness or the dimming, whatever you want to do through this switch. But um, we're talking about automation here, and when we're talking about the high end option, I want to show you some better options. Okay, so the next option and what I am currently using on my dream reef tank is the uh, Philips Hue motion sensor. This guy is a bit more expensive. He runs at about 60 bucks, but it's a really neat solution. I just sit this inside my cabinet. Whenever it sees motion, i.e. when I open one of the cabinet doors, it's set to automatically turn my lights on. And what's pretty cool about it is I can have it do different things depending on different conditions. So I can have it when I open the cabinets during the day, it turns them to a cool white color at 100% intensity. But if I open up the cabinet doors in the middle of the night, it only powers them to 40% strength and has them at a warm white so I don't blast my eyes when I'm looking at that skimmer to make sure it's not overflowing. Some little simple additions there are pretty nice. And in the situation with my dream reef tank, that works an absolute charm. Okay, now as promised on the Dream Reef Tank, I'll show you how this works. There's no actual sensors on the cupboard or cabinet doors itself, but as soon as there's some motion in here, the uh, motion sensor there picks it up and turns all of the uh, lights on. And I've got it set that when it stops seeing motion after two minutes, it turns the lights off. So even if I do close the door, the lights do stay on. You can just sort of see them through there for another minute or two, and then they'll turn off. But that is completely adjustable. All right, so the final option of automating the lights in this cabinet, and the one I have gone for on this Cade Frag Tank, is to use the Philips Hue HomeKit connectivity. Now, what that means, if you've never heard of HomeKit before, it basically allows some smart devices to talk to some other smart devices. Now, in my instance, I have some Arlo security cameras. I have one in this fish room. Most of my cameras are outside around my house, but because of my clear, investment into the hobby. I want any motion in this room recorded. Now, that security camera has a motion sensor built into it so that whenever there is motion, it tells the camera to record the footage. HomeKit allows me to utilize the motion sensor in that camera to control these lights. So all I've done is I've built up a basic automation to say whenever that camera sees, automate, uh, sees motion, turn these lights on, and after two minutes of no motion, turn these lights off. That allows me to just walk into the room and by magic, these lights turn on. And when I walk out, by magic, they turn off. Pretty cool. All right, guys, there's a few different options for getting some really nice, slick looking cabinet lighting in your reef tank. Something that I personally highly recommend when you've got good lighting in your cabinet, it makes it much easier to get your maintenance done, to see what's happening, just basically work on your reef tank. And it also gives it that real deluxe feel when you've got some automation to it. You open up a cabinet door and those lights just come on, make it super easy to see everything. It gives a really nice wow factor. 
I'll start to wrap the video up here. If you've automated your cabinet lighting using any other method, I'd love to hear about it. I know people use their uh, Neptune Apex systems or GHLs or whatever it may be, but if you've got something a little bit more left of field, I'd love to hear about it. Put your comments, suggestions, feedback, anything at all in the comment section down below. I personally reply to each and every comment in there. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And last but not least, if you're yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. There's a button down in that corner there. Hit subscribe. It'll cost you no money at all and take two seconds of your time. I'd personally appreciate it. Other than that, guys, till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.